All right, welcome back to Hasbro's Hide. Working again on our 1903 Springfield, made in 1942. Um, and so we had to change the barrel. If, you, if you've seen the initial series of this, this barrel inside, this is the original barrel, was extremely pitted, uh, really badly pitted. And so we need to change the barrel up. So this is a new Criterion barrel. We've had to do several things to it, including cleaning up this diameter a little bit so the sight collar would actually fit over it. We had to remove the sight collar off the original one which was quite a task, and had to make some tools to do that. Uh, really, I mean, a tool to drive it from this end without uh, driving into that pin. And so that was pretty easy. You just take a section of this pipe and was able to do that. And you can look back in that section, that video if you want to know more about that. But today, what we're doing is we've already done a couple steps here that I'd like to explain to you. So first thing you have to do is you have to time the barrel. So you, in other words, you got to fit the barrel to the receiver. There's a timing mark here on the original receiver, and there's a timing mark here on a barrel. And what that does is that aligns the barrel, and you get your sight down here square, okay, square to your receiver. And so once you do that, then you know, you're all set. It's, everything's timed and tightened together. The problem is um, this comes, the shoulder here is what we have to work on, comes long. So it has too much steel this way. And it needs to be turned, or metal needs to be removed this way, to make these two marks align. So when I initially fit this, this was the receiver line, it was all the way back here. And you could not apply enough torque with the action wrench to make it turn that far. It just simply wasn't gonna happen. So I didn't know how much to remove. And so um, I told the, told the tool maker of mine that did this, a friend of mine did this on the lathe, to give me a 16th of an inch, thinking that would be plenty. Well, that was too little, to be honest. Probably should have at least an eighth, maybe um, three sixteenths, to be honest. Um, uh, back back towards this way. So if you do that, be careful not to go too far. But if you do, you can do what I did. And so when I had this as a 16th, I tightened it up with the action wrench. It just didn't have enough torque. It was clearly just barely engaged. And so what am I going to do? Well, short of a lot of work on the receiver and perhaps even the barrel to uh, re-time these things and move this back so I can uh, have more interference, I tried an AR-15 uh, barrel shim. And it, in fact, was a very tight fit over the threads, the original threads. And once it dropped over the last thread and came up against his shoulder, it was perfect. And so that, those shims, at least the ones I had, were four thousandths of an inch thick. And we had removed eight thousandths to get it to the sixteenth. So uh, not that this may be the case for everything, but in this case, if I had gone four thousandths in the first place, it would have been a perfect fit. Well, we didn't know, so this works perfect. So that shim drops in there, it was fit perfectly against it, tightened right up, and then we were able to get good torque uh, right to align our marks. So that part's perfect. That all that part's all done. And so what we need to do now is chamber the barrel. And so this, this barrel is, is called short chambered. It's 10,000 short. So if you took your case and put it in there, it won't go far enough forward this way. It's 10,000 to short this way. And so they do that so you can you can ream this out and get just the right head spacing. And so that case will go in just right. So you have a go, a no go, and uh, the chamber reamer that we're going to use here and some cutting fluid. So I'm going to set that up here in a minute and we'll do that. Once we're done with that, then we'll go back and we'll take the action back off and we're going to install our sight. Uh, the reason we take the action back off to install our sight is you need to be able to see this pin. And that pin will align with this groove which you've cut in there to drive in and lock that collar. And then this pin, you don't have to take the action off for, but there's a cross pin that goes down here too. And so we'll drive that back on. Now the same tool maker friend of mine made me this tool. And so this is really useful. It goes on the inside of this pipe and this pipe slips over the barrel because you have to install this uh, sight collar from, excuse me, from the muzzle end. Okay, so you have to have something that can slide all the way over ideally. So this works perfect. It's longer than the barrel and you can take a mallet then and drive the end of the pipe and not damage anything. But then uh, this other end of it here is made to fit just inside of this very thin steel lip. So you don't damage the lip, you drive on this shoulder and now you can drive your sight all the way in. So it's a really nice, uh, nice tool to do that with. So when we get to that point we'll show all that but for now let's get this set up and let's chamber our barrel. All right, now we're ready to uh, finish ream our chamber. And as, as I mentioned before, it's about 10,000 short, Criterion says, from being um, all the way chambered. And so from um, 40rentals.com, I ordered this uh, bearing piloted reamer. So this is a finishing reamer. And we'll be using this then, uh, let me get that maybe better in the picture, but using that then to finish ream the chamber. And so these are the cutting edges. We'll just be going down about 10 thousandths of an inch very, very slowly. 
So uh, when you do that, I'd, I'd advise you go ahead and rent their uh, handle. Uh, this is very nice to use, and you can uh, then bring it all the way down through your receiver and have enough then to get a hold of and control uh, that reaming operation. So what will also happen then is I also thought about buying these, but just for one time for me, it's too expensive. But this is a go and a no-go gauge, so we can check our headspace properly. Now, uh, these, you can barely read what they are. So I don't know if they've been used a few times, or this marking is just not very um, deep. But they're Forster uh, go, go, go no-go gauges that you can rent from uh, 40rentals.com. And so this is the go. You just got to look very carefully, and it'll say go right here. Uh, probably, I'm sure you can't see it in the camera, and then this will be no-go. So this is just slightly longer, and this is slightly shorter. And so uh, you can't really measure that, though, for the overall length. I checked them with calipers, and what's really changing then is this shoulder position uh, where you're going to hit on the shoulder. So uh, just make sure you get the right ones to do your checks and, uh, you know, <laughs> double-check that. But what you'll do is you'll ream a little bit, clean up all your chips, drop this in there, and then you're going to take your bolt... Put it in and see if it'll close. And you want it to just barely close on the go gauge. And then you want it to not close on the no go gauge. And so we'll check that here in just a minute. But let's go ahead and get, I bought from them just because I didn't have any more on hand, Tap Magic. Okay, so a good cutting fluid, a uh, good heavy viscosity cutting fluid. And so we'll get it ready to go here and, um, and use it for our. Uh, cutting operations. Now the key thing is, like I said, you got to keep cleaning these chips out every so often. Uh, I don't have compressed air up in this part of the shop. I do down in other areas of the shop, but we'll just flush it good. So I put a bucket below it to flush our, our reamer. And then of course we'll continually wipe it down. Now you need to be very careful with these because uh, these are rented, right? And so they need to go back. Now they're real sticklers on getting them clean, <laughs> but just to be honest, this one isn't perfectly clean. There's stuff down in there, but down where it really matters, it is. So I'll just wipe it off here a little bit, get it cleaned out. Very, very sharp, so don't get your fingers anywhere near those edges. Uh, you'll have a, you could have a very bad day. So get that all nice and clean. That looks good. And then I'm going to flush it with this fluid, and that's why I've gone ahead. I have this in my Wheeler bench vise blocks, but in a normal vise. And so I've wrapped it around with tape, wrapped it around a cloth to keep the oil from soaking uh, the wooden blocks that the Wheeler um, barrel vise, I should say, uh, uses. So we'll go ahead and put uh, plenty of oil on here. We run it down in there. And the key thing is you go really slow with this process because going too far is an expensive and bad day to correct. So it's something you're not going to be able to do, at least I can't do, with the tools I have on hand. So you very carefully then guide this without scraping it. All the way down then into your chamber. And don't drop it. And you'll feel when it starts, that pilot bearing starts to get into your lands. And right there, you can feel it just start to cut. So I'll just leave just the weight of this handle for now. And just turn a little bit, back it off, turn a little bit, and then we'll see how much we've removed. Because I don't think it'll be too much here at the beginning, but we're going to be very, very careful. Now we'll look for chips. And there are just a very, very few chips. So I'm sure that's not nearly enough. We'll turn it just a little bit more. And we're going to flush it and uh, check with our, uh, our go gauge. We'll spin that down in there. Make sure that thing is in there nice and solid. And just very slowly, not a lot of pressure, because we don't want an aggressive cut. You don't want real rough cuts in your chamber. Uh, so we'll just do that very, very carefully. All right, so that's about five turns. Now, while I'm turning, you're supposed to continually turn it clockwise, by the way. Um, that's the way the cutter is made. So we'll back this off and bring it back out carefully. All right. And they're just, I don't know if you can see that well on the camera or not, but right on that edge, just a few little, very, very fine pieces of steel that we've removed. So we'll clean that off. Get that all nice and cleaned up again. We're going to flush our chamber. So we'll just flood a little bit of cutting fluid down in there. It gets real clean. I think I'll grab a patch and just sort of push it through there too, just a little bit to clean it up. So uh, one second, we'll be right back. All right, again, we've wiped our cutter off, our reamer off, and now we're going to add some more cutting fluid to it. Get it all well lubed up. Uh, this is needed to cut smoothly and also to flush the chips out. So 
using too much here is not a problem. And then again, I have a bucket down below. Uh, we'll go ahead and flood our chamber just a little bit here too to catch this as it goes. So we'll ream just a little bit more. Now here again, I'm going to be really cautious on how far we go down. So I'll do another oh, three to five turns maximum. We'll see here and we'll check our fit. So you can feel just when it starts to engage. Again, not a lot of pressure because you don't want to be hogging it out and causing a very rough chamber. So we'll turn that a little bit more. You feel it cutting there. All right, so that's when it's really starting to cut. And again, I'll keep turning, but back the pressure off by lifting up on this. And then we'll take it back out. And again, you see there's just, I don't know how well you can see in the camera there, but some really fine chips past that cutting edge. So that's good. All right, and then we're going to re rinse and repeat. We're going to clean that uh, chamber very carefully again here. Um, patch it with some heavy uh, cutting fluid on it. And just kind of, I'm just pushing this on down into the rifling, by the way, to get it past our chamber, because I don't want to be pulling it back up into it more than I have to with the patch. And so that pushes it down. And again, you'll see a, a little gray indication of material we're cut. So before we do that again, we'll clean that out a little further now with a clean patch. And we'll just make sure that we are not getting, I don't want to have oil between that uh, no-go or go gauge and our bolt because it would give us you know potentially false reading so clean that out real good you see we pulled out a little bit of oil there in fact i think i'll take another patch into that and uh, clean that just a little bit more because i flooded it pretty heavy with cutting fluid Yeah, that's just perfect. So that's not bad there at all. So now let's grab our bolt, grab our no-go gauge, put our no-gauge, or excuse me, our go gauge back in here carefully. You always start with a go gauge. So if I misspeak, I'm sorry. Always start with a go gauge. You got to get it to just barely close. Get that all the way down. And we made a little more progress, but that clearly is not going to close. Okay? It's not ready to go. So we'll have to ream just a little bit more and we'll just keep doing this process back and forth until we get there. All right, so we've taken our reamer and very carefully gone down and now we have it just where it needs to be. And so uh, again, being very, very cautious. So here's our go gauge. We'll drop it down in here. And again, the way this uh, 1903 Springfield extractor works, you can, you don't have to take the extractor off. You can go um, straight on in with this thing here. So let me get this lined up. There we go. And you can hear it click. The extractor will pop right over the top of that. And if you look, it tightens up right as we close the bolt, but not too tight. Okay. It's snug, but not too bad. So we can lift this off, drop it down in there again, pop our extractor. And um, let me reposition this so you can see just up here just a little bit. Okay. Hopefully you can see this just a little bit better. But as we close this bolt right here, it starts to get snug. Not bad, but you can definitely feel it tighten up. So it's it's just beginning to drag a little bit and right there, just snug as it locks up uh, as the lugs drive forward. So that is our go gauge. So that is a good place to be. Let me get that back and we'll pull our um, gauge out here. There we go. Um, if you do that, if you're doing this, you can grab that carefully and do, you know, sort of guide it out before it falls off the extractor. So uh, here was our no go gauge. We'll drop it in there. Again, you'll hear that extractor just pop over it, and then you can bring your bolt forward. And right there, it's stuck, right? I'm not going to force it, but I don't think I could. It's really good. So our go gauge just barely closes. Uh, not excessive force, but tight. Uh, you know, I should say snug, not tight. Um, but our, our no-go doesn't come close to closing, so it just drops down and stops firm. So we've got our headspace set perfectly. So now we can uh, go back to, uh, you know, bluing I mentioned before, installing our front sight collar, and then installing the front sight. And we put our gun back together and finally get this thing to the range. All right, so I've uh, removed the action. I've already applied some of the super blue here. And if you haven't done that before, I just warmed the barrel a little bit with a... Um, 
uh, heat gun, just, just got it warm enough to do this, applied this to it after degreasing it carefully, dunked it in water, rinsed it off, and then oiled it, excessively oiled it here to stop this. It's a rusting type reaction, so you don't want to do that. Now, if you notice, it's kind of splotchy here in the edge. That's just because I didn't want to get it close to our shoulder, to this washer rate I put in there, and any of the threads. So I kept it well away from that, and then have since oiled these, you know, rinsed them, and then oiled them as well. So that should all be good, but I just wanted to protect this area. Now it's going to be covered in grease, etc. But when I took this one off, after, you know, the original barrel off, this was almost, you know, rusted solid. It was quite hard to get, even though they put grease in there. So I wanted to, and they had removed the finish on that fit there too. So uh, when they did it originally, or didn't even finish, maybe perhaps this area. Uh, so I, I just wanted some protection here on the surface, and then we'll grease it up and put it put it back together. Now when we uh, put this sight color on, this is our timing mark that I mentioned for the action. You won't be able to see this timing mark, which is uh, unfortunate, when you put the sight color on, the way this thing is designed. And so uh, evidently what they've done is this bottom line of the sight color lines up with that witness mark. Okay, So if you drive this on carefully, you can get this line in line with that and you'll be on your mark. Now, the way you also know that and the way I checked that is that when this is driven forward, uh, this area right here, uh, I don't know if you can see that well or not, um, the hole, the pin in the, in, the sight, in the sight here will line up with this one. Now they're at an angle. So I'm sure they had a fixture when they did this. They had this on here and then they would drill this into it. So I have put this in with, with a hand engraver and cleaned it up and got it in the original barrel's position. It might in the end be very slightly off of here. It's a mild steel pin that goes in here, that's fine, but you could also very carefully drill that and get a slightly better fit. So we'll see how that goes. That's probably what I'll end up doing, just a little bit of fitting there uh, in that. So uh, this is ready to go back together. What I'll do is grease this up with our shell aero, aero shell grease here. Uh, grease this up good. Uh, grease the inside of the collar up real well, and then we'll drive this home with our sight with our sight installation tool that buddy of mine made. So again, this will go over the barrel like this into there, and then the pipe will go over all that, and then we'll be able to drive the collar down um, onto this. So I'll put a soft piece of wood here, and then we'll drive this into its final position. Check that fit. If the fit's good, drive that pin. Drive that pin install our action then we're ready to put our gun back together so i'll, I'll do some of this off camera because this is kind of awkward and bulky to work around and we'll check out the final result all right here we have it i've uh, installed the sight collar on put the pin in in the back of here and just like i thought it was very close but i took a hand drill and just slightly drilled it and then the pin went in and snug and so it's really uh, good it's a mild pin if you didn't get this perfectly aligned and that pin or you drilled slightly too big if you weren't careful. You can also just put a slight bend in the pin and it'll tighten itself up because these are all mild steel pins that go in here. It's an old trick from building muzzleloaders. Um, when you cross pin a muzzleloader barrel, you don't want the pin straight because it'll fall out. So you put a bend in it. So as it goes through, I don't know if you can see it, but as you go through, it tightens up. And so I just went ahead and did that on this one as well. This was the original pin, but I went ahead and put just a slight uh, bend in it and as you drive it home then it really snugs up well. Uh, our alignment is good here so our action and our bottom of this um, step here in the sight collar lined up well. Visually it looks like the sight is perfectly flat and uh, in alignment with the front sight so that's uh, that's really good then here we should have really no issues with our uh, sight and working with it. So uh, we have our action now of course it's properly head spaced and ready to go. So uh, work on the next uh, week or two here on trying to get this gun fully assembled back together. Uh, but in the meantime, hopefully you'll like this. And if you do, give me a like and subscribe.